Hey guys and welcome back to my channel and welcome to my review of the Transformers Siege War for Cybertron Trilogy Wave 5 Deluxe Class Spinister and wow what a fantastic figure to have in the final wave of Siege releases. I'm not entirely sure whether it's because I've just finished reviewing the first wave of Cyberverse Deluxes but this just feels like a masterpiece when compared to some of those other figures that I've just recently reviewed. Now I'm not entirely sure what order this this review will go up in. However, I have just finished taking a look at some of those Cyberverse figures and I've got to say that handling this release, it's honestly as if though this was a figure that was released in 2010. The joints feel fantastic, the plastic quality is just exceptional, the detail is really well done and the articulation on this figure is just wow. I'm thoroughly impressed with this release and what a bang to end Siege on and to enter Earthrise with. So taking a quick look at the packaging we can see here that we do in fact have a super nice looking piece of artwork for Spinister it's super cool we've got Spinister with his weapon he doesn't come with any target masters but for those of you unfamiliar with the character of Spinister he is a Decepticon target master this figure here is a deluxe class as we flip around to the back of the box we've got our standard promo pics of Spinister in robot mode and in helicopter mode as well as some cross promotional sales and then on the other side of the box we've got an image of the rest of the Siege artwork and the front of the packaging just has Spinister's name and the Siege War for Cybertron logo. This figure honestly has just absolutely blown me away in terms of quality. You can see here that hardly no figures can pull off this type of pose but Spinister can for some reason and I'm not entirely sure why this figure feels so good. The quality just feels incredible. The articulation is amazing. We've got some fantastic ankle rocker joints and and something which has really surprised me with this figure is the fact that he is completely symmetrical despite him only using one cockpit for the helicopter mode. That really is to me a marvel of engineering specifically for a deluxe figure. We can see here that the cockpits are identical even when turning around to the back minus the landing gear here you can see that all of the joints are more or less exactly the same. It really is fantastic to see how well designed this figure is. Now when I first saw production images and promo shots of this figure something which really worried me with this release was these wings or these propellers sticking out of the back I really do not like transformers that have these sticking out of the back as they never tend to have a locking mechanism meaning that the propeller is always spinning around getting in the way or becoming loose this figure actually has thought of that and this peg section here actually prevents it from spinning all the way around if you compress the backpack really tightly this section will Will not go anywhere which I cannot comment highly enough on the designer team really did a great job when designing this figure they thought of all of the potential problems that this release could have and have counterbalanced them with some fantastic design choices now in terms of weapons Spinister does come with these two blasters he doesn't unfortunately come with any target masters however of course we can in fact implement some of the other target masters that have been released within the siege toy line he comes with with a purple Gatling gun and then a blue almost like null ray blaster. Both of these have got opposite pegs and ports so you can either peg the blue one on top of the purple one and vice versa with the purple on top of the blue and it can also be held in either of Spinister's hands so you can have a almost quadruple type of blaster in this hand or you can in fact detach them and have them both handheld weapons or how I like to display him with him wielding both on his forearms. Now taking a closer look at Spinister's detail, I really am a massive fan of the head sculpt. Very Decepticon in its design with these sharp jagged edges for the top of his crest. I love the paint application used on the mouthpiece. It's almost like a teal type of turquoise, almost aqua blue type of paint app used there. It looks really nice and definitely juxtaposes some of the other colours on the figure. I like the yellow painted eyes. Something which I also was concerned about was the really bright colours on this figure. I didn't necessarily think it would look too great in person. However, I've got to say that they really pop. The purple contrasts the blue so, so nicely. We've got a great
great looking Decepticon insignia on the chest. Some nice gunmetal silver paint apps here. Some really nice sculpted in and painted details here for the torso. Lots of line work on this figure as well. Loads of different sculpts all over it. We've got some of that traditional Siege battle damage dry brushed on the forearms as well as on the thighs and some of it on the lower leg sections. But turning the figure around, there isn't really and truly no kibble unless you count this section, but this is accurate to the design, so I can't really floor it on that. He really does compact really nicely and is actually one of the larger Siege Deluxes. He just feels so high quality. It really does feel as if though Hasbro is treating us with this figure they're rewarding us for staying true to this line and being loyal to this line by giving us a fantastic final wave. In terms of articulation, the figure's got a ball joint at the head. It can be rather slightly difficult to get to it due to the towel section of the helicopter mode, but it is still able to be rotated nevertheless. We've got full 360 rotation here at the shoulder. Something which I'm so thankful for, which was apparent on Cyberverse, is that there are no ball joints that are visible. All the joints look really cohesive with the rest of the design. We've got some great hinge joints allowing you to hinge the arms all the way up to that degree. 360 rotation at the bicep and then due to transformation, double joints at the elbows, 360 rotation at the wrist, 360 rotation as well at the waist. We've got a great degree of leg motion kicking forwards and then a fantastic degree kicking backwards. He can do the splits all the way, 360 rotation at the thigh. The knees can bend, I'd say roughly 90 degrees and the toes of the feet, should I say, are so articulated. They can hinge forwards and backwards as well as out to the sides and due to transformation, they can also hinge inwards, allowing you to get this figure in some running poses, much like I demonstrated towards the beginning segment of this review. I'm just almost gushing over this figure. It's that well done and is by far one of my favourite deluxes from the Siege toy line. For a Siege Decepticon size comparison, here I have the Decepticon version of Impactor. Also another one of my favourite deluxes to come out of this line. However, it's definitely been dethroned by Spinister. You can see that although Impactor was a very big figure, he did compromise that largeness with having some hollow spots. I can safely say that Spinister really and truly doesn't have many hollow spots on him at all, which is super nice to see. And he definitely does feel almost the same quality, if not better, than Impactor. You can see here that they are roughly the same size. However, if you do count Spinister's rotor blade at the top, or the tail blade, should I say, then Spinister is slightly taller than Impactor. However, I've got to say that in terms of overall enjoyment. I thoroughly enjoy Spinister so much more than Impactor, despite this being one of my favourite figures from Siege for a very, very long time. That's just how good this figure has turned out. Now with size comparisons and robot mode completely finished in terms of a review, we get into Spinister's transformation. And once again, this is also a process that I found myself thoroughly enjoying. It really does seem as if though I am gushing over this figure, but that's just quite honestly how well this figure has turned out. Out. So obviously to begin with we're going to want to remove both of Spinister's weapons and just set those off to the sides for later on. We can see here that there are some slots that will plug into some tabs on the forearms. So just fold these up on both of Spinister's sides. So fold this section up too. We can then straighten out the head, just straighten out the whole body just so that everything is symmetrical for when we begin to really get into the deep part of the transformation. Coming to this back section, as I spoke about earlier, you're essentially just going to want to pull this piece out and you can see how important this notch is to actually keeping this rotor blade in place. As as soon as you remove it, the rotor blade just flops from side to side. So once again, that is definitely a design choice I'm thoroughly impressed with. Then we're just going to want to straighten out the rotor blade like so. Now we're going to come to this torso and you're going to want to apply pressure with your thumb to this torso section and just bring all of this out, bring the entire rotor blade section out, the whole towel fin, just elongate this and the head will tuck into this cavity. We can then come here and click this into place just so that all of this is now fully elongated. Now what you're going to want to do here is come to this section and just rotate this around. Here you're going to take this leg and rotate this up and keep that down. And then this section here will just rotate and rotate at the fire. This piece here, rotate, I believe this way so that you've got both of the hollow sections facing forwards with the screws 
at the back here and this crotch plate completely covered. So this is the look you should have in order to transform this correctly. We're then going to want to lift this section out. And now what you're going to want to do is just elongate this and pull all of this out. And there is a tab under here that will actually plug into this slot. So you just want to bring this around and tab this into place and just align it and snap this in just like so. With that done, we can then proceed to fold all of this up into place, ensuring that the waist joint is lifted out of the way. We can then bring this panel down and collapse it so that it keeps the shin section solidified within this joint so that this can't really go anywhere. We can now bring this whole section down, fold this foot out, and you can see here there are two tabs on either side that will plug into these two slots. So just bring these down, perhaps move these arms out of the way in order to help aid clearance and just snap all of that very securely into place. These two tabs here will plug into these two slots here. So just tab that into place as well. And now what we can proceed to do is there is a slight groove there that this tab here will click into. And here we can see there is a slot that this tab will peg into as well as a slot here that this tab will peg into as well. So it's really all a matter of just aligning everything appropriately. I tend to try and get the, this tab in first and then this one follows along. So just tab that in and that is one side fully completed. Repeat the same process here for this side. So bring this around. This actually has to be rotated around like so. And then we can bring this down and around and you can see that this tab will plug into this slot. So just bring this, this is probably one of the more difficult parts of transformation. Bring that over, bring this out, fold all of this in and up. And once again, there is a tab there that will plug into this groove. So just click that into place, fold this panel over and flip down the landing gear. And then just bring this arm in for this tab here to plug into this slot and this slot to plug into this tab. So just align all of this up, tab that all into place, come to Spinister's weapons and just peg those onto the underside on both sides. And with all that being said, here we have Siege Spinister fully transformed and in his helicopter alt mode. And similarly to robot mode, this really did surprise me when transforming it for the first time. This is a fantastic looking helicopter Cybertronian alt mode for Spinister and a really good alt mode for a fantastic looking robot mode. This figure just is an all round pleaser. And quite honestly, I am very tempted to just give this figure a full 10 out of 10 as I cannot think of any flaws with it other than it doesn't come with any target masters but I think that Hasbro blew most of their budget on this figure so including those probably would have shot this up to the Voyager class price point. We can see here that when in helicopter mode he does kind of balance on this front landing gear here as well as these two nubs on the blasters and this faux cockpit. You can see that the faux cockpit really does sit rather flush on the underside of the vehicle mode and this cockpit is obviously the main one. The rotor blade is incredibly free spinning so can really really spin quite nicely as well as this towel rotor blade we've got a nice Decepticon insignia on one side with loads of different sculpted in details so just overall a really nice looking helicopter mode definitely one of the better helicopter vehicles that we've had and surprisingly I do actually think that it is rather clean looking minus this cockpit but this to me is just a marvel of engineering of how they are completely symmetrical in robot mode and how they've managed to hide this faux cockpit away. I haven't seen a case where they've done that since the leader class studio series Grimlock where that had two complete T-Rex heads and obviously one of those has to hide so that one can just become the main T-Rex head and here is a very similar situation with these front cockpit windows. So definitely a super nice looking figure as well as in his helicopter mode. So there was my review on the Transformers Siege Deluxe Class Spinister. First of all, I want to apologise if this review did in fact turn out to be a complete gush fest. I just thoroughly enjoyed this newest release from the Siege toy line and it's a fantastic deluxe to actually close the book on the Siege toy line as all of those figures really did impress me. I still have one more figure in this wave to review and then I believe that will be the chapter closed for Siege. For me, that review will be coming out fairly shortly. This figure 
Vanguard really is though one of the better figures to come out of Siege and I've got to say that they definitely have saved one of the best for last. I really enjoy this figure's robot mode. I think that the articulation that they have in fact incorporated is fantastic. I love how they've got two symmetrical cockpits in the robot mode and then obviously only one takes centre stage within helicopter mode. Transformation isn't simplistic but it is still rather enjoyable and still challenges you enough to think about it first time round. If I had any criticisms regarding this figure it would be that the instruction manual is complete garbage. I really did have to revert to a common sense basis in order to learn the transformation as I don't understand how Hasbro think it acceptable to place dark images on a dark background for instructions. It really does make it rather convoluted and difficult to read but as it stands the transformation for this figure was thoroughly enjoyable and I find the overall helicopter mode to be one of the most sleekest and cleanest air-based vehicle modes that we've had in a very long time. I thoroughly enjoyed taking a look at this figure and I'm sure that you'll agree that this figure is great too. Be sure to let me know what you think of both the figure and the review in the comment section below and until my next review I'll see you then. Thanks for watching.